a fantastic question. I, I've always found myself to be a little bit Republican, and I've also found myself to be a little bit Democrat, uh, kind of like that old uh, country song, you know, the, the Osmonds, you know. Uh, and so I'm, I'm looking forward to actually bring both sides together. You know, clearly more than half the, the state are unaffiliated voters. And I'm looking to reach out to both sides of the aisle, uh, but not, not, not mostly most sides of the aisle, but uh, clearly half the people I think feel like myself. And we're looking to, uh, to, to bridge that gap with the new moderate party and myself. We're trying to bring the people together to more of a to equilibrium somewhere in the middle. So our state isn't extreme over here or extreme to the right on these issues. I think it's very important that uh, I don't think anybody disagrees that we should have clean water and good education. These are these aren't uh, uh, political issues. These are these are actual social and uh, quality of life issues. Uh, I hope to uh, make uh, Rhode Island also a destination. One of the things that we want to make is I call it destination RI. I think it's very important that we start bringing more people into the state. Uh, we can either pay more taxes next year. Everybody agrees taxes are going to go up. We can either pay more taxes or we can bring more people in to pay those taxes. And I think we have some of the most fantastic beaches. We have Newport, Providence. We, we have world-class entertainment here in Rhode Island, and we need to showcase that. And one of those uh, signature things, I think, are going to be Destination RI. Robert Healy and myself actually are running on the platform that the office should be actually be eliminated. Uh, a million dollar budget for an office that has, you know, very limited functions is, you know, absurd. There's a lot of better things that, that uh, money can be used for. Uh, how many playgrounds can be, we build with a million dollars? How many uh, uh, structural reforms can we make with that million dollars? Uh, one of the platforms, like I said, that mo the moderate party, myself and Mr. Healy, are advocating is the actual elimination of lieutenant governor's position or at least statutorily make changes so there's no functions in the department and that the funds are removed uh, from that department until such time as the, the lieutenant governor actually takes over for the governor. And uh, so, yes, it, we actually believe that the position should be actually eliminated. And if it's not, uh, it, should be, it should be authorized to, to take on other functions of the government so we can relieve pressure somewhere else on the budget. So. As I said before, we, we actually advocate that the position be eliminated and that the, the monies that are actually allocated to the lieutenant governor's office be reintroduced into the general fund. But absent that, if that doesn't happen statutorily, what I envision that this uh, lieutenant governor can do is be an advocate uh, for the local small business community, uh, the local health care community, and the emergency management uh, uh, council that we have and actually try and strive to reduce the bureaucracies, but not so much just strive to reduce the bureaucracies, but actually change the fundamental attitude that we have in Rhode Island. Uh, we have an attitude that, you know, it's defeatist. Uh, well, I don't know if it, people supported Obama or didn't support Obama, but o Obama had two phrases that he used to say, hope and change, hope and change. And then the second time around it was, yes, I can. And yes, we can. The, the problem was that nobody did. Nobody did. What I want to do is I want to start, start reintroducing programs, and it goes back to my destination RI. If we can just imagine, if we can imagine things like the world's largest chowder cook-off in Charlestown, the world's largest wing festival in Wickford or Warren, you know, if, if we can bring back the, uh, the local arts and uh, the type of uh, movies and the independent film festivals that we used to have. Let's talk about the gravity games. Let's talk about adrenaline. Let's bring these things back to Rhode Island, change the attitude from that yes we can to yes we will. That's what I would like to see. I think that as lieutenant governor candidate running under the moderate party, I'm in a unique position where I, as I've said before, I'm a little bit Republican and I'm a little bit Democrat. I've actually been endorsed by both parties for various offices at different times in, the, in Rhode Island history. Uh, I believe I already sit in that position of uh, being uh, in the middle. I also believe as a uh, lieutenant governor, I believe that the lieutenant governor's office, if, if the voters choose to keep it, should actually run under the same ticket as the governor's office. I believe that uh, having that same continuity, if in the event that something did happen to our governor, that the continuity of policy and ideas continues on. 
Uh, we, I do advocate for the Constitutional Convention so these issues can be addressed. What function would the lieutenant role play? Should it run on the same ticket or should it be eliminated? And that's one of the reasons why I strongly suggest that the Constitutional Convention be implemented and voted for this year. Actually, I think we do a pretty good job with the Emergency Management Council and uh, the functions, but I, I know the, the role is always expanding because a lot of people assume it's just natural disasters, but that's not true. Uh, we also deal with Homeland Security issues on that council, uh, and we also just deal with general, general terrorists or, or uh, non-natural disasters, but we see a lot of times, like we've seen at our elementary schools with some of these horrid shootings and stuff, uh, this Emergency Management Council should be you know, the go-to agency I believe, uh, for those types of issues also. But I do think we could do more training at the civilian level. Uh, just simple things like keeping our roads open. If, if you remember with some of our hurricanes, the trees come down, just training some people and having them know how to properly remove trees from the roadway. Um, maybe working with, uh, working with people in certain neighborhoods so we actually have uh, chainsaws available. They're trained in the use of chainsaws or changing the use of not going near power wires. Uh, the, the other thing I think that we could do is we need to to identify all those people that don't have potable water when their power goes out. You know, it's people in the city of Cranston and Providence don't realize that when they lose their power, they have a municipal water. But people in Exeter and, you know, various places in other parts of western and southern Rhode Island are on wells. Uh, they don't have any potable water. They don't have any drinking water. They don't have any water to bathe. And those are some of the types of issues. If we identified those people when we have extended power outages that we could try and get water and get to those people knowing that they may be shut-ins or not. So I think that's a civilian training would be my biggest number one goal there.